Derivatives are useful for so much more than simply geometry. They are also incredibly important when doing approximation or estimation. If you think about what we have done in, say, looking at tangent lines to a curve in three-dimensional space, that's more than simply, oh, let's find the, the line that's tangent to it. We're really doing a linear approximation to that curve. Now, you know, I know, we all know that the linearization varies from point to point, and the fidelity of that approximation changes from place to place. This is true not only in the case of a curve in 3D, but also uh, in the case of a surface as well, where that linear approximation is guided by the geometric intuition that we have of tangent planes. And again, the, the goodness of fit, how good a linear approximation those first order terms give you is a function of the geometry of the function that encodes that object, in this case, a surface. So what happens in general when you have functions with lots and lots of variables? Well, to do approximation, to do estimation, it's best to use differential notation. You might want to recall things we've done in the past with implicit differentiation. Let's interpret that in terms of differentials, see how it relates to derivatives. Let's say we have a function f depends on variables x, x1, x2, x3, all the way up through xn. Now, when we've done implicit differentiation in the past, we write df, the differential, as a linear combination of the dxi terms, where the coefficients out in front are the partial derivatives of f with respect to the various inputs, the xi. So this linear combination of differentials can be thought of in terms of estimates. If we, if we think of each of those uh, dxi terms as, as representing a small change in xi, or a rate of change, if you like, then df represents a small change in the output. And we can use those differentials to estimate changes. Now compare that to what we've done with derivatives, where instead of writing df, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that alternate notation, partial f, partial x, where that x has an underline. That means I'm taking the derivative with respect to all the variables. Of course, this is really just the derivative as a matrix, as a linear transformation, where the entries are partial f, partial x, i. Now, this linear transformation acts on a vector of rates of change, but what if we think of that vector of rates of change as dx, as a vector of differentials, dx1, dx2, all the way up through dxn? Then we can write out this differential formula as df equals partial f partial x times dx and you're, you're seeing the chain rule inside there, you're seeing how the derivative acts as a linear transformation, but by writing this in the more suggestive language of differentials, now we are armed to start doing estimation.